Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And now we will turn this part over to announcements. Are there any announcements tonight? Yes, sir, Minister Hallelujah. Marcus. Thank you for that praise and worship. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead and share my Hallelujah. screen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, just kind of getting into um, tithing the offering tonight. Again, if you want to give cash, contact Sister Samantha or Sister Laura Preacher, um, and they will rearrange a way to meet you to get your tithing offering. If you're giving via cash app, go ahead and cash app dollar sign GRRC flow. That's G-R-R-C-F-L-O. And then you also have the option to text to give. If you text the word give to 843-616-0478, you should receive a text message sent back to you with the instructions on how to give through that, that way. Um, and if you are cash apping or texting to give, make sure that you are specifying how much money you're giving toward offering and how much you're giving toward um, tithe. So that way finance can keep that um, information and track it for you. Uh, we will pick back up with our pastors and teachers workshop. Uh, we were doing it every Monday in December, but we had to take a little break from that. And now we'll start again this month um, on Monday, January 11th. So that'll be this coming Monday. Um, and it'll be at GRRC Florence at 7 p.m. And then also uh, this was now announced, excuse me, on Sunday but the uh, Ladies of Unity Christian Church is inviting the women of GRRC to their women's conference. It's called Jewel, and it'll be Saturday, January 16th uh, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at uh, 1631 Trinity Church Road in Alcoree, South Carolina. Um, so if you are interested in going, please let Pastor Tiffany know by this coming Sunday, we need to get a count to her by this Sunday so she can let um, the ladies at Unity Christian know how many to expect from GRRC. So again, message or contact Pastor Tiffany if you would like to attend this conference. Yeah. And that, that is all for my announcements. Um, but I do want to say too that we will post the giving slide again at the end of tonight's service. So if you did not get that information on how to give, we'll post it at the end so you can be sure to to give and then I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to um, Apostle Merritt. Very good, good evening, good evening, good evening uh, family. Uh, so glad to always, it's a pleasure to be with you all and to be able to share with you all um, in this space. Um, I'm thankful that, you know, the Lord has given us access to different spaces that in spite of situation that we can gather together in his name. And he's the same God that's still in our midst. Um, wonderful time of worship and thank God, thank God for Minister Marcus and uh, just uh, leading us in worship. And thank God for, for Pastor Tiffany and I believe a little bit of Jamisha jumped in too with some background and um, just the heart of worship and praise. And it's just such a blessing to see that spirit, that spirit of uh, just uh, reverence and blessing and exaltation of God because he's so worthy of all of that and so much more. And so um, uh, just good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, I'm so excited because if you did not know him, make sure you let everybody, uh, tell everybody, we, we're we gonna see each other Sunday. We get, we're going back to the house on Sunday. And so look here, I'm, I can't wait to smile in all y'all face. I'm gonna slap my biggest smile on everybody. Uh, I'm excited about it. And I believe the Lord is going to meet us there. He already has a word. I don't know exactly, but he, he knows what he wants to speak. And I believe it's going to be a word in season and on time. So come and bring somebody with you um, as well as we continue to, to uh, stand in, in the promise, the power, and the grace of God, knowing that he's with us. Amen. And so this coming Sunday, we actually going to have praise team rehearsal tomorrow evening. I might just sneak in there so I can get some of that. Um, it's been, been, been quite some time, 
And so um, I thank God for that. Um, and, uh, you know, we will give the, the offering um, options at the end of, like Tiana said again too as well. And so just welcome you all, thank God for you. Um, we're in a very much prophetic time um, in a prophetic season. Um, and it's, it's very important that we, we hear words spoken in season and it's so imperative that we don't, we understand what we need to be doing in this time. This is a time of aligning ourselves with action that God wants some action, uh, you know, um, he wants our actions to reflect the line with what he's doing and saying right now. Um, and so it's gonna be very, very important for us to, to um, value the prophetic. Um, we're in them, what the, we're in what we call in the world, the information era or the information age. Um, and that simply put um, pretty much knowledge is more readily accessible than it's ever been. Um, in other words, uh, if you want to know something, um, and if you want to know something about the sun, or if you want to know something about how the, the, the stock market works, or if you want to, or if you need to know something about how taxes work, if you don't know, it's not because you can't, it's because you just haven't made the effort. In other words, that information is available, been made at fingertips. You can, stuff that we used to have to go find an encyclopedia and hope it was in there. There were sets of encyclopedias that you would go to and you still wouldn't be able to find certain bits of information. Certain dictionaries that didn't have certain words. Now we have Google because we're in the information age. In other words, ignorance is not by circumstance, it's only by choice at this point. If we're ignorant, we just chose to. We can know it if we want to know it. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. We're in a revelation age. We're in the age where God is exposing himself in ways that he never has. So if we're ignorant of the word of God and the things of God, it's not by circumstance, it's by choice. And we just can't afford to be ignorant. My people perish for lack of, this is not the time not to know. This is not the time to say, I don't know him and I can't know him. We're in a revelation age. Revelation is exploding um, because God is revealing himself. And it's so very important that we don't find ourselves ignorant in a revelation age. We don't find ourselves not knowing what we could know if we just put ourselves in position and made sure we heard with humble ears. Um, and so with that being said, I'm going, I know some of the thing I'm going to say today has some prophetic aspects to it, um, and it, has some positioning aspects to it. It has some exhortation to it and it has some revelation to it. Um, understanding holiness and understanding positioning. I've been dealing, I dealt a lot with that and will continue to that th this is not a time of fighting. This is a time of establishing. The, 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 the fight is a height. There's a certain level we can get to where we no longer need instruments of warfare because war is not allowed up there. The enemy can't reach it. It's called being seated in heavenly places. It's one thing to hear those things and know them mentally, but it's another thing to enter into the knowledge and the experience of those things. That's what we're working towards. And that's what I'm, that I am laboring to pull you into. That's what I'm laboring to expose you to. And so when I speak of ignorance to revelation, I'm not just speaking to, to um, not knowing what the scripture says, but, but even more so not experiencing what the scripture says. This is not a, time, not a time to learn a bunch of stuff in our head that we're not experiencing in our life. God is ready for us to, to, to see demonstration of his spirit and power. The word, the, the kingdom is not in word alone, but in demonstration and power. This is a time that God wants us to not only experience the demonstration, but in all honesty, actually be the demonstration. He wants to demonstrate who he is through our lives. And, um, and so I'm going to share some things tonight with you all that are important. And, and I pray that you 
you would hear, hear attentively and humbly because I believe that, that um, it'll bring us closer as a people into experience and encounter, um, not just academic information, but experience and demonstration of the things of God. And, and I want to continue in that vein in holiness because I know that this is the year of holiness and the Lord just continues to deal with me concerning that. Um, I, I uh, alluded to it on Wednesday, um, Isaiah 35, and I want to take us there on tonight. If y'all don't mind me teaching for a moment, the Lord had me writing today. I have some things that I've written down that I want to share with you. Um, yeah. And um, also, you know, I do love interaction. Um, and I know for some of you, I may have you unmute yourself, but I, but it's good even to post some stuff in the chat that that as I'm teaching, and I'm going to try to take my time with this and share some things with you. But I promise you, this is a word of positioning. This is a word of God's agenda is to position us by way of holiness. Um, and uh, this is a word of positioning. And I believe that it is, it is a, a prophetic word for this time and, and for now um, that could bring us into now, I'm going to tell you one thing about Revelation 2. It demands uh, uh, a re revisions. Revelation demands revisions. You can't be exposed to Revelation and expect to, to do things exactly how you did before that exposure. With that comes a responsibility to revise some things. No matter how much or how little, some things have to be tweaked. Some things have to be shifted around. And I need y'all to understand, there's going to be a responsibility of revision this year. Not, not to hear things that you know are right, but sit on them. But, but, with, but receive those things and begin to live out those things immediately. There has to be proper response um, to, to these things that we're, we're tapping into and entering into. So I implore you to understand and expect to, to have this word deal with you in a way that brings revision to you as it does me. Uh, not just you, it does me. I must be first partaker of that fruit. So Isaiah 35, verse number one, and the first initial verses, I am not going to be able to get to, but we will get to them. But I'm really going to concentrate on the end portion, verse number eight and verse number nine. But I do want to read the entire thing because it's not much. Um, Isaiah chapter 35, verse number one, it reads, the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Verse number two. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Verse number three. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Somebody's going to get some strength tonight. Amen. Somebody's going to be strengthened. We're going to be strengthened. We could go on to, to verse number four. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong and fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Verse number five. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. I love the way that connects. I, I ain't got time to work with it, but if you read it, I believe the Lord will bless you. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Verse number six. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart and the tongue of the dung sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Verse, verse number seven. And the parched ground shall be a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Verse number eight, this is a, a focus verse, and I may just sit here and work number nine later. Now get this, and it says, and a highway shall be there. Come on, everybody unmute yourself just real quick and mute yourself right back. Just say highway. 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 
highway. Yeah, glory to God. Glory to God. I got about three or four. So the rest of y'all could just type it in the in the chat. Highway. And a highway shall be there. And a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. Glory to God. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. Right? I want to focus on that verse. I don't, I'm not even going to go to verse number nine. I want to work verse number eight. I'm going to read that one more time. And a highway shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. Father, we thank you and we bless you now for the power of prophetic teaching, for the power of words spoken in season, for the power of your precious Holy Spirit to come in in the space Lord God, even though we're in a Zoom, Lord God, you're in between the Zoom. You can fill up and make up the difference. And so I just thank you and I bless you right now that everything that you are coming in for is accomplished. That us as your people are strengthened, edified, uh, brought into a greater measure of perfection, victory, and position in positions for which you've called us to take in this time. Lord God, I bless the hearer right now. I bless the hearer. I release grace upon the hearer. I release, oh Lord God, favor upon the hearer. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Look, Isaiah 35 and 8, I'm going to read that one more time. And, I, and you know, I'm going to read it. Now, hopefully it becomes a, a memory verse for you, as I have committed to make it a memory verse for me. And a highway shall be there and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. I want you to understand first and foremost, the, the panoramic perspective we must take on holiness. In other words, the multiple expressions that define what holiness is. Holiness is not just otherness, amen? Um, holiness is not just set-apartness, if I could say it like that, to be set apart, if, even though it is otherness, and even though it is set-apartness, holiness is a way, or better said, a highway. That's why I had you say that. Holiness is also a high, it is otherness. It is to be set apart. It is to be sanctified, but it's also a highway. Holiness is a highway, now get this, and a highway is a means of transition or to traverse on. Highways are created for one purpose, for cars to transition and traverse, to move from one place to another place. What I want you to understand tonight and I want, what I want to bring into view is that also the understanding that holiness is an agent of locomotion. Come on, holiness is an agent of locomotion. Uh, it's an agent for, uh, uh, that, that has a purpose to, to, of movement. Why is that important, people of God? Why do I want to point out that to you? Because God is holy. Come on. Because God is holy and holiness is who God is and holiness is also a highway or a means of movement. God is holy. Holiness is who God is, right? And holiness is also a means of movement. So what I want you to understand first and foremost as we approach what I want to bring into view tonight is to be holy is to be moving. Come on, to be holy is to be moving. Holiness is a highway because God is holy. Listen closely, God is always moving. 
Amen. I know he's other. I, I, I know he's set apart. I know he's unparalleled. But because he's holy, that means God is also always moving. What, what I'm saying is God is never idle. He's never a bystander. No matter what it looks like and no matter which direction a situation may be going and, and, and how grim or how ungrim it looks, God is moving because God is holy. See, that ought to encourage somebody tonight because you, you, what you don't, what, what I need you to understand is, is that no matter what it is that you may be facing and no matter what perspective you may be taking on it, something else that you need to understand is, is that God is moving. No matter what's happening in your children and no matter how that may seem to be going, God is moving. No matter what's happening in your house or in your body, God is moving because God is holy. He's never idle. He's never a bystander. He's never just standing by. Somehow or another, he's injecting his influence into everything that's going on, and he's working it towards good. Amen. He's always moving. Huh, I just need you, uh, somebody that would just speak back to me uh, in any way and say something just to understand he's always moving because he's holy. Amen. Amen. He's moving right now. He's Amen. moving right now in your life. Come on, he's, he he's moving right now in your future. Come on. He's moving right now in your family. He's moving right now in the ministry. He's moving right now. Amen. Because he's holy and holiness is a highway. All right. And so, so I need you to get that first. Uh, to understand that aspect of holiness, God is holy. Now, now I, I want to break down moving, moving into four aspects of what that means. What, when I say moving, four things I want you to, to take note of. When I talk about moving, I'm talking about developing, growing, progressing, and advancing. Developing, growing, progressing, and advancing. God is holy because he's always developing, growing, progressing, and advancing his will in creation. Developing, growing, progressing, and advancing. He's holy because at all times, at all moments, whether you, me and you are aware of it or not, whether me or you can see it or not, he's always developing, growing, progressing, and advancing his will in creation. He's holy because he's always developing, growing, progressing, and advancing his revelation of who he is to us all the time. Amen. Holiness is a way or a highway. Therefore, also, what must we understand? Because he says to be holy. Come on, y'all. Y'all know where I'm going with this. Be holy as he's holy. Holiness is a way or a highway, therefore, for me and you to be holy is for us to be moving. We, me, I need y'all to understand something about holiness. We can't be stagnant and be holy. Glory to God. I need y'all to get that right up front. We can't be stagnant and be holy. We cannot be satisfied with being idle and be holy. We cannot camp out and refuse to budge forward and be holy. We, me and you can't stop developing, growing, progressing, and advancing and be holy. Now, if God says be holy, and it means for us to develop, grow, progress, and advance, guess what we always have permission to do? See, a lot of us hear the obligation, but we don't hear the permission. So he said, be holy as I'm holy. And that, and him being holy means he's always developing, growing, progressing, and advancing. That's not an obligation. That's permission. That's permission for me and you to always be developing, grow, uh, growing, advancing, and progressing. Glory be to God. Uh, look here. I, I, I need you to understand we are wired to develop, to always have permission to develop, grow, advance, and progress uh, in, in everything that we do at all times, because we're to be holy as he's holy, 
even when we're sitting still, we're developing, growing, progressing, and advancing. And I'm going to get to that in a minute because we're like a wheel within a wheel. The, even when the outer wheel isn't spinning, the inner wheel is. That's a whole nother topic. But I need you to understand, me and you were created to consistently develop, grow, progress, and advance. That is being holy. Glory be to God. Me and you can't stop developing, growing, progressing, and advancing. How? Spiritually. Now, I'm not just talking about natural, because I know a lot of people focus on the natural, but that's not good. I'm talking about spirit life. We can't stop developing, growing, progressing, and advancing spiritually and be holy. Amen? Uh, what am I saying? Moving in character consistently. Mo moving consistently in Christ-like character. Progressing consistently in Christ-like character towards the character that reflects him is being holy. That's being holy. Moving in thinking consistently towards the target called the mind of Christ is being holy. What I wanna, wanna say to you, beloved, and what I need you to get about holiness is holiness is a perpetual, perpetual inward progression. It is perpetual inward progression. It is perpetual inward transition. Come on, glory be. I ain't talking about outward transition. I'm talking about inward transition. Le how? Led by the Holy Spirit, right? It is, it is, holiness is inward progression. It is consistent inward transition led by the Holy Spirit. Why? Watch this. Because the Holy Spirit's highest priority isn't to lead us into our season. Hello, somebody. The Holy Spirit's highest priority isn't to lead us into our miracle. It isn't even to lead us into our wealthy place. The Holy Spirit's highest priority is to lead us into holiness. Oh, man, I hope y'all get that. To be led, those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit leads our inward man into holiness. Amen. I just want to let that sit for a minute. Th those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are being led into holiness, which makes them sons of God because they're holy like their daddy. Holiness is a highway. Glory be to God. Come on, somebody just work with me a little bit and say highway. 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 Holiness is a highway. It is a means of movement. It is a means of movement. Amen. We, we if we're going to be holy, we're going to be on the move in our character, in our demeanor, in our mindset, in our disposition, in our perception, in our view, we're gonna be on the move. We can't be holy without moving in character. Consistently moving forward in character is actually what unlocks consistently moving forward in life. Consistently moving forward in character is actually what unlocks consistently moving forward in life. See, God brings us into holiness so he can bring us into destiny. Man, I, I, I hope you say out that one for a minute. God brings us into holiness so he can bring us into destiny. Because how far we enter into destiny is a direct reflection of how much we've embraced holiness. God brings us into holiness to bring us into destiny. How far we enter into destiny is a direct reflection of how much we embrace holiness. See, what I need y'all to understand something about this year, if I could just speak over you for a minute, this is going to be, these are some prophetic uh, statements that God gave me that I want to share with you. 
this is going to be a year where God positions us in a place of destiny for which we've never experienced before. But it's not, listen closely, but it's not going to be because we're running after destiny, but because we're entering into holiness. I'm going to read that again. This is going to be the year where God positions us in a place of destiny for which we've never experienced before. But it's not going to be because we're running after destiny, but because we're entering into holiness. And a secondary consequence of holiness, as a secondary consequence of holiness, we're going to advance like we've never advanced. We're going to progress like we've never progressed. Why? Because holiness is also a highway. As we enter into holiness, we also enter into movement, progression, advancement, and development. Literally, please hear me, you're going to see the hand of God move through your life upon other people's lives like you never have. There's literally going to be kingdom manifestations around you that surface to minister to people even at times where you're not conscious, God is about to break out through who you are. You're going to find yourselves in, in a position to accomplish things in ministry and in business that you've prayed for and asked for, but never saw how it can happen. And now God is saying, I'm going to show you how it's going to happen. Holiness. Holiness is going to be your highway. Holiness is going to be your highway. Glory be to God. I, if, if there's anybody who, who, who would say an amen on that, would just you could just put something in the text in agreement with that. Amen. That, that, that's what God is going to do this year. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to I wanna take holiness a step further. I want to take it Take it a step further. Please don't let me move too fast. I'm going to share this. To enter into holiness is to enter into greater dimensions of the character of the man from which the Holy Spirit comes. I'm teaching about holiness. I'm going to read that again. I want you all to catch that one. To enter into holiness. Amen is to enter into greater dimensions of the character of the man from which the Holy Spirit comes, who is Jesus. We're, we're becoming holy as we're conformed into his character. Holiness is simply being led by his Holy Spirit from the inward man into his character. It's his spirit leading us into his likeness. Holiness is his spirit leading us into his likeness and he shall guide you into all truth. And we look at that as information, but truth is an, truth is an information, truth is a man and he shall guide you into all truth. We're becoming holy as we're being conformed into his character, the character of Christ, amen? So our character level is our key to every next level. Our, our character level is the key to, our, to every next level in our life. Why? Because holiness is not just otherness, right? Come on, just work with me for a minute. Holiness is not just set apartness, it's a highway. To be holy is to be moving. Being holy gives me permission to progress. Amen. Being holy gives me permission to progress. Literally, when by way of holiness, we progress in Christ-like character, listen closely, every progression in character becomes a new key that unlocks the next level. Our, our, our progression in character is always our next key. Many of us are trying to get to levels that we haven't yet gotten the key for, but we thought the key was a, a piece of silver or the key was an idea when the key is another degree or dimension of identity. The key isn't an idea. I need the right idea so I can get to where God wants me. The key is entering into another degree of your identity. 
every level of character is a key to unlock the next level of your purpose. I hope y'all following what I'm saying. When by way of holiness, we progress in Christ-like character, every progression in character becomes a new key that unlocks the next level. Many of us are trying to go to, many times, I ain't gonna say many of us, many times people in general, I'm sorry, don't let me speak at you. I just wanna speak in general. Amen. Many times people are trying to go to a level that they don't have a key for. Their character can't unlock the level they're trying to go on. God gives us what he gives us by way of character. So Yahweh doesn't just give us our purpose. I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. We must progress our way into our purpose. We must be holy, progress into the measure of his character that can not only comprehend our purpose, but can actually be trusted with it. See, a lot of people don't understand this. Some people will never know their purpose, not because God didn't give necessarily them a purpose, but they'll never be led by Holy Spirit into a measure of holiness where they can be trusted, first of all, to even be able to be aware of it, and secondly, to be responsible for it. To be responsible for that. We want the next key. It's the next level of character. Every measure of Christ-like character becomes a new key to unlock the next level. If we're not going to the next level, we need another key. Well, what's the key? Another measure of conforming into that character, entering into a measure of holiness. How? By being led by Holy Spirit, by moving. Not moving outwardly. We try to skip the inward movement and move outwardly. But the scripture even backs me up that we shall prosper. How? At, even as our soul prospers. What does it mean to prosper? It means to increase. It means to have something there that wasn't there before. Right? So you think of natural increase. Now apply that to your character. It's to increase in your character. Your soul increases. That means there's something that your soul has increased in that it did not have before. It has prospered. It has advanced, progressed, developed in Christ-like character. Therefore, now you have a key to unlock the next level for which God wants to bring you in in outward destiny. Amen? So literally, as we enter into holiness, we enter into destiny because holiness is a highway. We're intended to progress our way into our promises. See, we, we won't access certain promises until we progress onto a certain level of Christ-like character that the Father can trust with that promise. There are promises that we have that he's not going to hand to us, we're going to progress into. There's promises for versions of us that we are yet to advance ourselves into. There's a, cert there's a certain release that's waiting on a particular version, a certain level of character to be entered into. Those things aren't being held by the enemy. Those things aren't being obstructed by the devil. God is waiting on development. He's waiting, it has to be released as inheritance through holiness, amen? We must be holy in order to possess particular promises, amen? And I just want you to know that this year, God's agenda, God's agenda is to bring us into holiness. God's agenda is to progress us in character and give us keys to unlock next levels. See, God will never put more on us than we can bear. And our problem is we, because we have a, we only seen it through a religious lens, we look at that as our problems. God will never put more problems on me than I can bear. No, it ain't, it's not just bad things. God will won't put more good things on us than we can bear. There are some things that God wants to give us that our character can't quite contain. There's certain power and authority that God wants to flow through us that our character won't contain. It, it's good. There are certain levels of goodness that we can't handle character-wise as God is, is still developing us in and progressing us. And as we progress in character, that the keys are unlocked, that it becomes the key to advance. 
God isn't just waiting on a particular time. He's waiting on to see a particular dimension of his reflection. He's waiting to see a certain level of reflection when he looks at us, seeing him to release that unto us. I'm talking about holiness. Amen. Man, that's good. Yes, sir. So, so I, I, I wanted to share that first because that's what God's agenda is. God wants us to enter into our destiny more than we actually want our destiny. God wants to, to bless us with his goodness. A lot of people don't understand. God actually wants to bless us with his, with his goodness, good measure, pressed down, shaking and gathering, and running over. Why? Because it is an instrument of conversion. There are certain people will not repent unless they experience God's goodness. It is the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. Look, it is not the judgment of God that leads a man to repentance. The judgment of God will help a man understand he needs to repent, but it will not give him power to repent. When we knew when we sinned, we would go to hell. If there's one person in here, the first time they knew they was gonna go to hell for their sin, they stopped sinning. I want you right now to come on here and say, the moment I knew I was going to hell, I stopped sinning. You know why nobody jumping on? Because judgment doesn't have the power to bring us to repentance. It just has the power to make us aware that we need to repent. It is the goodness of God that God wants to be so good to his people that it'll make other folk repent. But we have to be able to handle that. Goodness will destroy you if, glory to God. Goodness, uh, our, our problem is we, we're so worried about the weight of problems and God is worried about the weight of promise. When I'm waiting to slap this burden of blessing on you, where the blessing of God comes upon you and overtakes you not so you can walk around saying i'm blessed so you can be an agent of influence for the kingdom everybody following what i'm saying it takes character amen it takes character being blessed is a burden that most people cannot handle Cannot handle. If God gives us a little bit and we're still twe tweaking, we're still going back and forth. There's some people that that go back and forth and they're just in God's mercy. And, and well, God didn't strike me down for it. And they, they're tiptoeing back and forth. Man, you ain't ready for the burden of blessing. You, you're not ready for that. And so what God is doing in this season and this time is I'm not trying to give you the burden of, 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 of um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? I, this is not going to be the burden of suffering. I'm I'm looking to see who I can put the burden of blessing on. Oh man, I that 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 ought to make us shift the way we. I know we don't look at it like that, but I'm I'm realizing God is saying Jeremiah, I need to deal with your character because I need somebody I can place this burden of blessing on and this burden of goodness because there's some people that want to change, but my people aren't functioning in enough of my goodness to give them the, to give them the atmosphere they need so they can change and repent. So I'm looking for a people that can be burdened with blessing. Hello somebody. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, 2021 is the position. God is trying to put people in position who can handle the burden of blessing. God Almighty. You know, with the burden of blessing, people will call you prideful when you're blessed. People will call, will tell, will, will talk about you and say, you done lost your focus on God. And you didn't did the, the burden of blessing is dealing with envy and jealousy. The burden of blessing is dealing with having, having more than you need, but yet still needing him more than what you have. I'm gonna say that again. The burden of blessing is having more than you need, but still needing him more than what you have. Man, I'm just preaching at this point. 
please write that down because that one dropped off. And, and I, I'm talking about the bird. I just sense the burden of blessing. And, and this is awakening somebody's spirit. I don't know who it is because somebody is recognizing that this ain't going to be a year of warfare. I didn't, I'm come out of warfare. This ain't going to be a year of mountains. I don't, I don't went up on top of the mountains. God is positioning me to see if I can handle the burden of blessing. And I decree and I declare right now in the name of Jesus, my God, if that's you, that there would be grace in your life right now to respond to the call of holiness. Come on, holiness is humbleness to respond, to lower yourself so God can lift you up. The way up is down. Glory be to God. That God wants to know who can I put this blessing on? Who can I raise up? And yet and still they stay low. Glory be to God. I release grace in your life to say yes to it. I release grace in your life to be positioned for it. Even right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Look here. If that's you, I just, I, I dare you to prophesy out of your mouth whether you get on or whether you don't you know, prophesy out of your mouth. I'm, God is positioning me. Just say God, God is, is positioning, positioning me. me. God is positioning me. To carry the burden of his blessing. To carry the burden of his blessing. The burden of his blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. 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 I sense that. I sense that in my spirit. Um, listen, I want to go back to Isaiah 35, verse number eight. Glory to God. And I want to read it again and I want to show you something because there's a warning and a soberness that we need. There's a warning and, and a, a soberness that we need to operate in, right? Isaiah 35 and 8, I'm going to read it again. It says, and a highway shall be there in a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unseen shall not pass over it. The un unseen, oh, help me. the unclean, the unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those. I need y'all to catch this because we're talking about those who qualify to enter into holiness but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not enter therein. The unclean shall not pass over. He's talking about those who qualify to even get in the position called holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, hallelujah, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, the only individuals that have permission to access the highway of holiness are wayfaring men. You know what I like to call them? I like to call them wayfaring worshipers. Woo. Glory be to God. Not just worshipers but that have, see, a lot of people think the worshiper accesses holiness. No, it's not the worshiper, it's the wayfaring worshiper. There are many individuals that are worshipers that know how to tap into worship, but don't ever get to the highway of holiness because it's not just the worshiper. Uh, it's the wayfaring worshiper. And I want to break that down. Wayfaring, it comes from the Hebrew word halak. Halak is the Hebrew word. It's H-A-L-A-K. This word is going to blow your mind and what it means. And based off of what we know holiness is, to be holy is to be moving. As along with it being otherness, along with it being set apartness. But we know it means to be moving because holiness is a highway, which is a means of movement. Right. And God is holy. He's always moving. Right. But, but listen to what wayfaring means, because I want to deal with the wayfaring worshiper, the one who enters into holiness. Wayfaring halak literally means this to walk. Watch this. And it warms up as we go along. Go away. Depart. Last two. Proceed. Move. It literally a wayfaring worshiper. <laughs> is a worshiper on the move. Man, and I, please understand, I'm not saying on the move like getting jobs and uh, getting degrees. Although when you're moving in inwardly in character, that may happen, but you can do all those things without moving a bit. You can be on the move in business, you can be in the move in education, you can be in the move with, on, with degrees, you can be on the move with money and not moved a bit. 
It is not, no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about a, a, um, wayfaring, meaning moving in character, thinking, and disposition. It's a worshiper who is not stagnant or stuck in one place, re refusing to move in their inward man. See, our inward man is supposed to be on the move. It's a worshiper who is not stagnant or stuck in one place, re refusing to move in their inward man. Please hear me, saints of God. And I'm, I'm going to say this part soberly. We're in a day and time where we lack wayfaring worshipers. Worshipers, you know what that means? Worshipers that actually change. Worshippers that actually go to new places inwardly and become new people through worship. Many worshipers today are not wayfaring worshipers. They're just worshipers. They, they are the worshipers. I'm just like this. This is just the way that I am worshiper. That is not a wayfaring worshiper. I'm like this because the way I was raised worshiper. That is not a wayfaring worshiper. This is my issue and this is just how God made me and and um, where I'm at, worshiper, that is not a way, wayfaring worshiper. Amen. And I need you to understand that. That, But they can go into worship. They sing. You can feel God's presence. They can, they, 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 they you know what I'm saying? They can tap into the flow in the environment. Um, they can release presence. I mean, they can steward the presence of God. Awesome worshipers, but they're not wayfaring. I want you to understand something about that. Because ultimately, we're not going to just be judged for, for, for not being evil. We're going to be judged for not being holy. That's a whole nother level of category. Amen. That I don't even have time to break down. That I got to really work you through to understand. Because it's not whether, you know what, now I ain't even going to go there. Because that's a whole nother can of worms. But they're not inwardly. He's talking about individuals that are not inwardly on the move. And therefore, sadly, these people will never enter into holiness. Holiness can only be found by wayfaring men. Holiness can only be found by wayfaring worshipers. Read the scripture. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for who? The wayfaring men, men on the move. We know that God is not talking about moving naturally and gaining things in the world. He said out of his own mouth, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? He's not talking about just being on the move naturally. Although if you're moving inwardly, you're going to move naturally. But you can move naturally without moving spiritually. Holiness is for the wayfaring worshiper. Amen. It's only available for those who understand and have the mentality because I am a wayfaring worshiper. My mind isn't stuck. It's going to change. Come on. I, I don't I, I know the condition of my mind. I know how I see the, how I see things isn't stuck. It's going to change. I'm not going to say it can change. No, it's going to change. Uh, 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 the, uh, I'm a wayfaring worship. The way I feel about certain things, it's going to change. I am not going to always see like this. I am not going to always feel like this. And I am not going to always think like this. If you're a wayfaring worshiper, that's your mentality. It ain't, it, it's not even, I can change my mind. No, my mind gonna change. It's not even, the way that I feel, it, I, it, it can change. No, my, the way that I feel about stuff is going to change. The way that I perceive stuff is going to change. And what is it going to change to? It's going to change into more and more like he feels, like he thinks. And it's not going to stop until I think like him, until I feel like him, until I see like him. I'm a wayfarer. I'm on a journey on the inside of myself that Christ might be formed in me. I'm walking in the hope of glory, Christ in me, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Oh, my mind is going to change because I don't think all the way like him yet. Oh, my humility is going to change 
because he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even unto the death of the cross and made himself of no reputation. And sometimes I still worry about my reputation too much. Oh, my humility level, it's going to change. I'm a wayfarer. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Come on, I need somebody to get that. I just need you to say I'm a wayfarer. Yep, 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 yep. So I dare you to prophesy that I'm over a yourself. Wayfarer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm a wayfarer. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I feel that in my spirit. I'm excited. I'm excited about meeting my me for next year. Well, I'm excited about meeting my 2022 me. <laughs> There's a new you coming. Come on, glory be to God. There's a new you to me. That's why we deny ourselves. Because there is a self that ain't a part of my next me. God, you might get that later. You might, but, but I'm a wayfarer. I'm telling you right now, some of the ways I'm going to preach, I ain't going to be preaching like that in a year or two. I'm a wayfarer. The insight is not going to be the same. I'm a wayfarer. See, the challenge with the church today, this is our challenge. We don't even understand that's our approach. God accepts, God just meets me, he just accepts me as I am. No. God accepts you as you are because he knows you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And he already know he shed his blood to bring you back to how he knows you in spite of how he accepted you. Hello, somebody. I hope y'all got that down. He accepts us as we are because he knows who we were before we were formed in our mother's womb. And he already know his blood was sufficient. He accepts us as we are because he know his blood is already bought bought the, the means and the grace for us to be restored to who he knew us as but he don't he, he'll accept us as we are but he refuses to leave us as we are we're wayfarers and the ch and, and, and the challenge come on I'm, I'm i'm telling you right now i'm going after the mind this year we got i'm, I'm pulling you up the challenge with the church today is we want to go somewhere and worship, but we always want to come back to where we were before we started worshiping. <laughs> it's like, man, I want to go, I want to turn on my song and I just want God to take me somewhere. But the problem is after we turn off the song, we want to return to where we were before it took us where it took us. See, man, when we're in worship together, and God takes that environment to places and we go somewhere, worship is supposed to assist us in going places we never, we never plan to return from. See, a lot of people don't understand it, but there's times we went into worship in the house that I changed forever. I changed forever right in front of you, right in your midst. I ain't going back. There's just certain ways I can't think no more. There's just certain ways I can't walk. There's certain ways I can't interact with my wife. Amen. And, and I know it to be true because my wife, she's the closest one to me. She, she's seen the change. She knows I'm changing. She knows I know this ain't the man who, who he was, not just before he got saved. Not just this ain't the man that used to drink. No, man, there's a man that I'm not after he changed me from drinking and after he anointed me from preaching. This ain't the man I knew last year. Some stuff that changed. Why? Because you have to be a wayfaring worshiper. I'm going to say that again, and I need you to write this down so you understand it and you'll benefit from worship the way you're supposed to benefit from worship. Worship is supposed to assist us in going places we never intend to return from. I or return to. Assist us in going places we never um, intend to, to return from, yeah, or go back to old places or I don't know. Y'all got y'all got it. See, transition is actually transformation. As we behold us in a mirror, the glory of God, we're transformed into the self-same image. We're not just transformed. God ain't just changing me. He's changing me into a self-same image. God is not just making me a better man. He's making me into the image of the son of man. 
God is not just making you a better woman. He's not just making you a better mom or me a better dad. He's making me into the image of the father because Jesus is the express image of him. You're not just getting better, you're getting like him. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the one, the wayfaring worshiper. And this is the key. We must begin to enter into worship open to the fact that it's supposed to be a means of transition. Look, well, in other words, before I start lifting up my hands, I might have to kiss my wife goodbye. Because after we finish and I put my hands down, the man that you kiss the next time probably ain't gonna be the one you just kissed the last time. I'm about to go somewhere. That mentality is the mentality that we must have in worship. If we're gonna benefit from worship. And that, look here, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> I'm some I'm, I'm a hug some of y'all goodbye for where God is bringing us in his presence. It's going to be the last time you hug me in that version. Because God, <laughs> the type of presence that's about to hit that house. I'm a you 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 that's going to be the last time you talk to me in on that level. Come on, you're about to meet a new me. Amen. You that's going to be the last. This is going to be the last conversation you have with me like this. Because I'm a wayfarer. Come on. Glory be to God. Amen. And, it, and that character, that approach, that understanding, that progression in character puts keys in your hand. And what people, other people are trying to get break, what other people are trying to break into, you can just put the key in and unlock. People are begging for breakthroughs, that you, breakthroughs for stuff you got a key for. Why are you trying to get a breakthrough? Just take the key. Take the key. He wants to give us keys to the kingdom. Amen. And so look here, I need to look here. I speak over our house and our people that we're a wayfaring church, even right now, that there's grace to be a wayfarer. And I need you to understand right now, that is not the lifestyle of the church culture around you. That is not the lifestyle of the church culture around you. That is not the norm. That is not the majority. So you got to be willing to take on a mindset that's not the majority. And even though it's accepted, now it's going, it's illegal. See, he, look, look, there's certain, I'm telling you, if, if, if we, because people say, look here, that's just the way you are. I'm just stuck in, and, and it's common and it's accepted, but what's, ex, but it's illegal for you because you know better. What to the, the servant that knows his master's will shall be beaten with many tribes. There's higher consequences for accepting a lifestyle as a worshiper that's not wayfaring because the revelation has placed an accountability on a revision. I told you that from the beginning. That the revelation has placed a, a responsibility on the revision. And your first responsibility isn't to tell somebody else you need to wayfare, you live it first. So when you say it to somebody, it has power. I, mean, I know somebody needs to hear this. I know somebody needs to hear this, but let's live it first. Let them, let them listen to your life speak it. Let them see the, the, the marked differences in how you, your temperament and, and your, your humility and how you handle situations and your, your peace and your your focus and um, how you, how much more you are a responsible in time. You're not irresponsible with your time. You don't don't throw it away on flippant stuff. Let it be seen. So when you open your mouth and you minister this to somebody, it has power to penetrate their heart. Amen. 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 Look, I want to take you to this verse because there's a consequence for this. There's a soberness that we need to realize. And I'm almost done, y'all. I hope I, I haven't been um, talking too long. But, but uh, 
Isaiah 33, verse number eight. Man, our media is the bomb. Our media is the bomb. I thank God for you. Um, Shelby Copeland and Johnny the third, man, they they keep what, what we got, they keep us looking like we kind of on cutting edge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We 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 ain't bad. But look, listen to what it says about the highway. Now we know what highway he's talking about, don't we? This is Isaiah 33. This is a chapter and a half before Isaiah 35, but it connects because it's all within the, that prophetic utterance. It says, the highway lie waste. The highways lie waste. <laughs> Y'all see that? You know why they lie waste? The wayfaring man ceaseth. He hath broken the covenant. He hath despised the cities. He regardeth no man. The prophet says, the highway lie waste. What's the highway is holiness. Or the, in other words, what he's saying is the highway is being wasted because there's no wayfaring worshipers. The highway is being, there is no wayfaring worshipers. So man, this highway is here, but it's being wasted. See, what I, what I need you to understand is God has some higher stuff waiting for us that will waste if we don't deal with this is just, this, this, this is just me mentality. God has some higher positions. God has some higher anointings. God has some higher promises that will be wasted. That will literally be wasted. And you won't even know you're wasting them because you won't be at a vantage point to see that they're being wasted. Unless we're, we're willing to embrace a wayfarer's heart. We, you, you, you know, she goes on to say, the highway lies waste. The wayfaring man ceases. He has broken the covenant. What covenant? The covenant of conformity. How are you going to say this is just the way that I am and still claim you're being conformed into the image of Christ? You're not wayfaring. To reject wayfaring is to reject the covenant of conforming. Our covenant is a covenant of being conformed into the image. That's what makes us sons of God because we're like the son of God. In him, it's all about him. Amen. And now we have worshipers that know how to be, give the professional sound and even in a sense, give a feeling in an atmosphere, but a bit more thinking about changing a lick of how they feel, how they think, how they act, how they respond, how they live. Are, are never going to make any legitimate alteration to their inward life. Amen? And it's sad because these people will never see holiness. If you don't see holiness, how could you have been led by his spirit? And if you're not led by his spirit, how can you be a son or a daughter? I'm just throwing some things out there that I need you to think about so we can understand and get gain a sober perspective. Now, we still walk in righteousness. We still walk in peace and we still walk in joy, but we need to be sobered of the condition. When God said there'd be a great falling away, he meant it in the last days that men would fall away from the faith, but we just didn't understand what that would look like. What that looks like is more men claiming faith than ever before, but less men actually having the faith they claim. That's the great falling away. Christianity has never been more popular, but yet and still there's never been le um, less Christians ever. I want you to salah that. Look at what it says. Look at what it says this. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, about holiness. If you would put that up, I'm going to put that up in the New King James Version. It says, pursue, pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which what? No one will see the Lord. If we don't see him, we can't become like him. As we behold as in a mirror the glory of God, we're changed into the self-same image. We can't, be, we can't be conformed into an image of the image of a God we can't see. And we can't see him without peace. And all. Now, notice it says, pursue peace with all men and holiness. 
And that doesn't mean that there's going to be peace between you and all men. Because then you, I, I want you to understand that first before I deal with the holiness. Pursue peace with all men. That doesn't mean it's going to be peace between you and all men. As a matter of fact, it won't be. Because he then he turns around and says, blessed are you when men shall revile you, hate you, remove themselves from your covering and speak all manner of evil against you for my name's sake. For the, so did they the prophets. You have to be able to to now reconcile both of those verses and see their connection. Um, in other words, right, no matter whether we pursue peace with all men or not, there's some people that are gonna have a problem. That doesn't mean that there's not gonna be people that doesn't have a problem with you. I want y'all to understand because some people read that and say, okay, we just also have peace with all, no, that we, we are to pursue peace with all men, amen? And holiness, without which, no one will see what? The Lord. You can't become like a God you can't see. We, we need to, it didn't just say, we got to pursue holiness. You, you're, me and you ain't going to just haphazardly be holy. We, we're not just going to go to church in the holiness. <laughs> you ain't, me and you just ain't going to go to church in the holiness. It, it don't work like that. We got to pursue that. There has to be a personal pursuit of holiness. How? Pursuing the, ho the, the holy one. How do I pursue holiness? I pursue the holy one. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his, and all of his righteousness. You, we're not, there ain't nobody going to be holy and they're not pursuing it. If we're just pursuing to make it through the week, we'll never be holy. We got to up the ante. We got to elevate the, 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 the aim. We got to up the, could y'all hear what I just said? We got to up the ante. We got to elevate the aim. I just saw Demisha put our aim is holiness. It's right on time. Well, our aim is off. We just trying to get a, you know what I'm saying? Lord, let the stimulus check come through. Blessing. And God is trying to get, you know what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong. Thank God for whatever. But man, that's way beneath what God is really wanting us to aim at. Amen. Last verse, last verse. Isaiah 35 and nine. He's talking about the highway of holiness and I'm gonna close on this. It says here, no lion shall be there. He's talking about where? Highway of holiness. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not even be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. They'll move around there. No ravenous or violent beast or lion shall be found there. See, what I need you to understand is, and this ties back into what we talked about ascending the hill of the Lord, the mountain on top of the mountains, for the house of the God of Jacob, where we beat our uh, swords in the plowshares and our spears in the pruning hooks. There's a place in holiness where the enemy isn't even allowed to be present. Man, I want y'all, uh, I believe that, Glory to God. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm telling you, it's right there in the scripture. I, I promise you, I can't make it up. There's a place in holiness where the enemy isn't even allowed to be present. There's a place in holiness where there'll be nothing there to obstruct our movement. Pretty much, he said, you're going to walk and there'll be nothing around that you got to watch out for. See, this is, God is trying to put us in a position of, remember I told you this would be the year of no corners, free course. This ain't the year where we, we, we need to be looking around, our, looking back and saying, we got to watch out for the devil. He don't, he can't come here. Not, not, not when you get in position of holiness, you know, when the blessings start coming, better watch out. You know, the devil get mad when you get, this ain't the time. You ain't got to, you ain't got to worry about that. They ain't even up here. The beast ain't up here. Come on, the beast. The beast ain't, this, this ain't, a, I am not watching out for the enemy. Oh, the only thing that I'm doing is I am literally preparing myself for the burden of blessing. 
it's it's a higher way. It's a higher way, the highway of holiness, a higher way. Why? If there's no obstructions and there's no presence of the enemy, what's the only thing left to do? Move. I'm telling you right now, stop watching out and move. If God wants that for some of you, because you've been in worship, God has been stirring you up. And there's some things that God wants you to move in that, for lack of a better term, seem daring. It seem daring. And, and there is a, a measure of the unknown in doing it. But it is God unctioning you because he is now positioning you and bringing you up into a place of holiness where you ain't got to watch out. Ain't going to be no blindsidedness up here. Ain't going to be no that came out of nowhere. Ain't going to be no take two steps forward and then something comes out of nowhere and knocks you five steps backward. It ain't even up there. It ain't even up. This is the highway. This is the highway. God, I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. So what, this is a time if you're watching for the enemy, you're going to spend your time sitting. You know, every time you turn around and look to watch your back, guess what you do? You break your stride. If I'm running, if I'm running, if I got any good sense, if I'm going to turn around all the way and look backwards, then I'm going to slow down, right? If I'm walking and somebody's calling me, I'm going, and I'm walking forward and somebody's calling me backward, I'm going to turn, I'm going to stop, then turn around. You're going to find yourself wasting time trying to watch out for something that ain't even in, don't even have permission to be in the vicinity. This is a year of progression, development, advancement. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? And I know there's still people still fighting. You know why they're still fighting? Because they won't come up. Do you, do you? I'm not saying, see, a lot of people think when I say that, it's like there's nothing coming against me. That's not what holiness, it doesn't mean that there's nothing there that could potentially come against me or nothing being said or nothing being done, but I'm in a mountain above the mountains. Even though I see it, it's not in front of me, it's actually beneath, I'm looking down at it. Amen. I still see nothing in my way. It's the vantage point that you're given through entering into holiness. If we run with what God wants us to do this year, you're going to turn around and look and say, my God, how did I get this far? How did I start in 2021 there and end up here? Man, look. You, you found the place that you, you're a wayfaring worshiper. Hallelujah. You found the place where there's no prayer. There's a lot of people fighting the devil right now. There's a lot of people trying to bind him, watch out for him. You know, watch out for the booby traps, watch out what he's planning for. But really, we're in a place where he can't even, he, he can't even find that, that. That's not a path that he's on. It's, that's really not our problem right now. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this is a window this is a window that God has given us to get in position. I'm prophesying to you, and I'm hoping y'all catching this. I, I pray somebody getting this. It ain't gonna always be like it ain't gonna always be like this, but this is a window. 2021 is a window um, um, for us to get in position. That you know, um, and and um. Uh, it's so, um, you know, look, I love you all. I just speak over every one of you. Grace to have a wayfaring heart. I pray that, that that's my prayer because I know if that's taken care of, everything else will take care of itself. If, if tonight, come on, Raman Sanda, that if it comes to I just speak over you right here where I am. Grace to have a wayfaring heart. Grace to have a heart that allows God to continue to, to be allow you to be open to go on to perfection. 
Come on, come on, they are to, to see things another way, even after God showed you another way to see it, but then he shows you another way to see it. Then he shows you another way to see it. And it gets brighter and brighter, even until the perfect day. I just, I speak for grace right now in the name of Jesus, that you enter into a place where your worship takes you places, takes you from places that you don't, you can't find your way back to. It takes you from places that you never return to. In the mighty name of the Lord, I speak grace over your life right now to begin to have a hunger to pursue holiness, to pursue cleanliness and purity, to desire, desire God and his nature like never before. In the name of Jesus, I speak grace for you to stay on the move your heart to stay on the move, your mind to stay on the move, your soul to stay on the move, your strength to stay on the move. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray I bless you right now and I decree it so that you will not come out of this year in the same position you're in right now for one reason. You're awake. There are certain things you don't see yourself as that you are and now you have a wayfaring heart to that your ears are open to things they weren't open to there are things you turned down because you said that ain't me there are things that there were opportunities presented to you but you said that don't fit who I am but now I reopen your remembrance I, I call that back to remembrance and remind you you're a wayfarer and I, I speak grace and I give you instruction look again Look again, your position is going to change. And as you enter into holiness, you're going to enter into that destiny. I decree it, I declare it, that it is so right now. In the mighty name of the Lord. Amen. I need everybody just to mute yourself and let's give God some praise together. Come on, let's bless him for what he's saying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Come on. Thank Hallelujah. You, God. Let's bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, yeah. God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is so. There's a highway there. Come on, and we own it. We're on it. Yes, sir. We're on it. Glory. We're on it. Listen, I love each and every single one of you. I can't wait to see you. We're coming in. We're coming in on Sunday with no fear. Invite somebody. Look, pull their arm. Uh, uh, get them in the house. God is going to do something supernatural. Thank you, Lord. God is going to do something supernatural. Get them there one way or the other. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, um, and I, I'm just so excited about it. If you would, Tayana, um, if you have not, uh, if you would put back up the ways to give. Put back up the ways to give. Um, if you did not get a chance to give, or if you, even if you got on late and you still want to give, we definitely will appreciate your tithe and your offering as it helps us to continue to do the uh, to do the work of ministry, just give us one moment and be patient with us, please. Just hold on with us for one more moment. She is going to um, not. Uh, Miss Tayana is going to uh, share it. Uh, I'm working us. on it. I need Shelby to uh, stop sharing his screen so I can share mine. Okay. Shelby, you can go ahead and and. Um, Do that, y'all. Thank y'all so much for being patient with us. <coughs> that is our um, cash app. If you need a cash app, you have it there, and then text to give. You could do either one of those two options. 
if you don't want to do either one of those two, you can contact, who are we contacting, Tayana? I believe we're, um, Sorry, it's Sister Samantha Scott and Sister Laura Preacher. Sister Samantha Scott or Sister Laura Preacher. And you can put that back. You put that screen back up. Sister Samantha Scott. Thank you. Um, Sister Samantha Scott or, or Sister Laura Preacher. You can um, get with either one of those two. And they will um, they'll make sure that you can give your gift. Amen. And, and I know the Lord will bless you. I know the Lord will bless you. Uh, look here. We thank God for you, love you, look forward to seeing you all. Um, and I'm just going to ask um, at this time if uh, our very own um, our Pastor Tiffany would come, if you would just close us out in prayer or anything that you feel led to share. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for all that's been said and done thank on you. tonight, Lord. We just pray that you continue to bless each and every one of us, even as we go on our separate destinations, and God, even as we lay our heads down on tonight. We thank you, Father, God, for the word of the Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for, that we shall make sure that holiness is our aim. Thank you. God, we just give you glory even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, family. Y'all have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.